Oh, hey, Dick and Leo, it's Lon Sybin here. Hey, I was just checking my email on my 1986 Apple IIe, or maybe an 87 IIe. Uh, this is running the Warp 6 BBS software, and I managed to get this thing connected to the internet uh, so that I can log into my Apple IIe from anywhere in the world. And as you can see here, I'm on my uh, MacBook Air doing that. And uh, it's kind of a neat uh, jury rig that I got set up here. So let me give you a tour and show you how it's working. Okay, here's our Apple IIe exposed to the world. We have a memory expansion card in here, and this brings us to a whopping 128K. Uh, you don't need even that much to run the BBS, but it does require uh, this card for 80 columns of text, which was something you had to add to the Apple. Uh, next to it is our communications board. This is a super serial card from Apple, and I don't know if you can see the printing on here. It's hard to see, but... Uh, this card is from 1981, and it's uh, communicating at 2400 baud. So it's not quite up to broadband specs, but it is good enough for what we're doing uh, with our BBS system. Uh, right in here, sandwiched right there, is our disk card. We're actually not using that because we have uh, this new piece of hardware called the CFFA 3000. And this came out not too long ago, actually. It's a pretty new piece of hardware designed by a guy named Richard Dreyer, and uh, it allows us to use a USB card or stick to power the BBS. In fact, the uh, entire bulletin board system is running on a disk image on that USB stick. So uh, everything in there I can pull right out, back it up, um, run it in emulation on a, on a Mac or PC, and in fact, I configure the BBS uh, running it completely in emulation, and then I just plug that card in to get us up and running. Now, uh, as you know, we only have a serial card in this device, so how do we get it on the internet? Well, that's where this little guy comes in, and that's the Raspberry Pi, and as I'm, I'm sure you all know about this, in fact, Leo interviewed one of the uh, founders of the Raspberry Pi movement, and it's got uh, Ethernet that's running into my airport router, and uh, there's a piece of software on the Raspberry running called TCP SER, TCP or TISPR, I don't know how they pronounce it, but what it does is it makes the uh, Apple think that it's talking to a modem, and it's doing that through this serial to USB connector that is plugged in to that super serial card. So uh, whenever someone telnets into the BBS, uh, the TCP or software will send through the serial card a ringtone essentially and uh, it thinks it's talking to a modem so as far as this apple is concerned it's still living in the 80s uh, yet it is talking to some 21st century hardware and it's amazing how much more power is in this little raspberry pi than is in this uh, this old apple IIe uh, but nevertheless that is the path it takes so if you're connecting to my bbs uh, you're going through this uh, modern piece of hardware through this modern piece of hardware and right into this old one and you can get online and send me a text-only email. So that's my BBS running on a Platinum Apple IIe and the Warp 6 software. You can connect to it at matrixreturns.dyndns.org, port number 6401 using just standard Telnet, although I do recommend checking out uh, SyncTerm, and it's a, a free piece of software for the Mac and PC uh, that emulates the BBS experience a little bit better uh, than some of the other software that I've seen out there. Uh, but Dick and Leo, I hope to see you as new members on my BBS, and I'll try to keep it up for at least a little while to uh, relive some of that nostalgia of yesteryear. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for having me on the show again.